私私たちは自分が通る新しい点と新しい人を神の約束に従って待ち望んでいるのですだから愛する人たちこのことを待ち望みながら傷や汚れが何一つなく平和に過ごしていると神に認めていただけるように励みなさい。Peter chapter 3, verse 13 and 14. But according to his promise, we are looking for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you look for these things, be diligent to be found by him in peace, spotless and blameless. You haven't already forgotten everything, have you? <laughs>、uh, see, I have an excuse. I haven't been in school for 35 years. I don't remember anything I learned. But I have a hard time remembering what I ate for dinner yesterday. So. I have a good English joke, but I'm afraid it wouldn't translate into Japanese, so I won't say it today.、Uh, how many of you think God is love? Anybody think God is love? How many of you think God is holy? How could God be both love and holy? You ever thought about that? How can He be both? When I was a boy, I was really a perfect child. I'm joking. I, it seemed like I got a spanking every day. I realize that you know, nowadays that's not approved of, but when I was a boy, it was very approved of. My, my mother would use a belt. You fold the belt in half, and if you go like this, it makes a really loud noise. It's really effective for scaring children. So I was. I, my dad would do that, he would snap his belt, and I was immediately afraid. But my dad didn't need a belt, he could spank me with his hand. And that was bad enough. <laughs> But my mom would do something really irritating when she was spanking. She would always tell me that I'm going to spank you because I love you. When I was a boy, I never understood. If you love me, why do you want to hurt me? I didn't like spankings. I have two sisters. They're both older than me and they're mean. 
They were terrible children. They should have gotten many more spankings. But I got them. I got all the spankings in the family. At any rate, there's a question that comes to mind sometimes when we're dealing with life. And we see sometimes holiness on one side and love on the other. And sometimes we think that if you want to live holy, you, you can't love. And if you want to love, you, you, you don't have to be holy. So it's interesting to me that in the verse that we read this morning, in verse 14, it says, Be diligent to be found by him in peace, spotless and blameless. <laughs> How many of you enjoy peace? You know, there are some very talented sports superstars who have lost their appeal to their teams because they cause trouble in the locker room. They destroy the unity that a team needs in order to make it to the top. Kai Irving in Boston was one of those this, this last year. He's one of the best guards in the NBA, the National Basketball Association. And yet Boston showed very little interest in rehiring him because of the problems that he causes with some of the other players. The older I get, the more I value peace. I don't like to have a bunch of arguing in my house. When I lead a meeting, I don't like it when someone turns it into a, a fight or a battle. I enjoy a nice, quiet trip to the resort where I can sit out on the balcony and just look at nature. I prefer a nice, quiet game of golf to a loud, exciting party. When I first went to Japan as a 23-year-old young man, I loved sports and exercise. So on Mondays, my day off, a friend and I would go to numerous places and we would play different sports. In one day, we would play basketball. Basketball, tennis, badminton, racquetball, bowling, and maybe even go to the beach for a swim. At the end of the day, we would be exhausted and hungry. We would swing by the local, and this is a good test for those of you who have been to Japan. Have you ever been to a Moss Burger? <laughs> So we would always go to the Moss Burger to get a bite to eat. 
I never understood why you would name a restaurant Moss Burger. <laughs> you know what Moss is? Right? It's the green stuff that grows on trees. So why would I want a Moss Burger? But I love Moss Burger. Uh, while we were out there killing ourselves playing sports every Monday, my missionary mentors, the McLeans, were spending the day in the local onsen. <laughs> they go get in the bath, then they would rest, they would play a board game, and then they would get back in the bath. And then they would rest some more. <laughs> this month I turned 59 years old. Now I prefer the onsen. I prefer peace over excitement. Now, when we look at Scripture, both Old and New Testaments, we see that the Lord puts a value on unity or peace. When Jesus prayed for all of us who are part of the future of the church, he said in John chapter 17, verses 20 through 21, and I'll go ahead and read it. I am praying not only for these disciples, but also for all who will ever believe in me through their message. I pray that they will be one, just as you and I are one, as you are in me, Father, and I am in you. And may they be in us so that the world will believe you sent me. Yes, <clears throat> 将来の教会につながっている私たちみんなのために I was at a conference in Phoenix several years ago. And after one of the night services, I went to dinner with an old college friend. And at the table next to us, there were two young couples sitting there. And they were aggressively arguing or debating over the question of whether or not the Bible allows us to drink alcohol. Was the wine of the Bible alcoholic wine or simply grape juice? It's a fascinating conversation to listen to. And my friend and I remembered the times when we used to argue about some of the minor issues of Scripture. It seems the older we get, the less we like to argue. I prefer peace over Pressing my point sometimes. Now don't get me wrong, I love a good argument sometimes too, but, uh, but I've learned to value peace. The Old Testament tells us that it's better to live in the attic of your house by yourself than in the main part of the house with a woman who is always starting arguments. The New Testament tells us that we should avoid a person who creates divisions in the church. 
新約聖書は分裂を引き起こす人とは関わりを持たないようにと進めています。Peace. God wants us to be at peace. 平和、神様は私たちに平和であってほしいのです。But what kind of peace is he talking about in 2 Peter chapter 3? Peter is challenging us to seek for the kind of peace that only holiness or righteousness can bring. You know, it's easy to get a real high while we are sinning. You know, if sin wasn't enjoyable, none of us would ever sin. <coughs> Sinning feels good while you're doing it. Sexual sin is especially so. Adultery, por- pornography, fornication. This person loves you and desires you in ways that your wife or your husband does not. He tells you how pretty you are, but、well, your husband doesn't say, say that to you anymore. Maybe that woman admires you in ways that your wife doesn't. And the lady on TV is perfect in ways that your wife will never be, so it's easy to desire them more than a real woman. A few years ago, I was out in the Midwest, and another missionary told me about、um, some way that he felt. When this other person had come to minister in his church. I totally understood because I too had a problem with that person. So, being the good friend, I told him that I agreed and that person could really be trouble to deal with. I felt so good knowing there was someone else who didn't like that person, not just me. And then my friend said to me something that shocked me out of my happy state. He said, Don't we just make a good couple of good gossipers? Gossip makes me feel so important when I tell people information about someone else that they didn't know. The feeling that comes with drinking a little too much wine or beer makes you forget your problems. Or maybe you struggle. Perhaps you struggle with taking pain medication, not just for the relief of your pain, but because it makes you happy. Personally, I have no desire to drink anything alcoholic, but I have a lot of back pain. And I know the temptation to take just a few too many pain pills. Now, I have a pastor friend in Japan who is very skinny. I think being skinny is a sin. <laughs> <laughs> One day he asked me, How can I gain weight? I told him, That's easy. We Americans are very good at it. 
And he said, Do you know that feeling that you get when you're full? Yes, he said. I said, Just ignore it and keep on eating. He said, Oh, I could never do that. And I said, Then you'll never get fat. And now, 30 years later, he's still skinny. Me too. <laughs> you know, that delicious food is so good that you just want to eat more and more and more until you just can't eat anymore. And then you have to have more so you take the rest home so that you can pick out when you get home. In America, we have a love affair with food. Sometimes it feels really good to tell someone off. I did that to a girl that broke my heart in college. I enjoyed it so much. <laughs> I've never been so happy to make someone cry after all the tears that I had shed because of her. The problem with all of these sins is that the good feeling only lasts for a short time. <clears throat> At some point, you have to bear the shame of having been unfaithful to your husband or wife or your God. When the pleasure is over, you feel so guilty. After the person finds out that you gossiped about them, you'll lose your friend and maybe your reputation. I need to stop for a second on this one. You know what the problem about gossiping is? I want to tell you something about KG. <laughs> You wouldn't believe what I can tell you about Keiji. Now, yeah. I hope that's not my phone. If it is, I apologize. Uh, now the problem is, Jacques knows that I'm willing to gossip about Keiji. So, if he and I have a problem between each other, now he begins to wonder who I'm talking to about him. And so it destroys all of our relationships when we start to gossip about other people. After you've made a drunk fool of yourself and a friend posts it on Facebook, or when you drive drunk and run over someone and wind up in jail, the shame takes a long time to go away. After you lose all self control and you rush over the table, always trying to eat first, and you can't say no to anything, people lose respect for you. Now, be careful not to judge every heavy person you see. <laughs> you can't judge a book by its cover. Not all fat people are out of control. And not everyone who is out of control is fat. The Romans were excellent at gluttony. But they weren't all fat. 
彼らがみんな太っていたわけではありません。Then, if you don't get control of your anger, it causes you to be unkind and you wind up with all kinds of broken relationships. Remember that ex girlfriend that I told you about that I made her cry? <laughs> well, <laughs> She came up to me at a roller skate party trying to be friendly, and what I said made her cry. But 30 years later, I saw her on Facebook and we became friends again. I still. Felt guilty 30 years later about the way I had treated her. And after 30 years, I finally apologized to her for what I said. The peace that is talked about in this passage in 2 Peter is not the peace that comes from getting along with everyone. ここの聖書の箇所に出てくる平和とはみんなと仲良くすることとは違います。Kind of you you your 周りの友達の罪を見て見ないふりをして平和に過ごすことではありません。この平和は聖なる生活から来る平和です。It's a holy peace that comes to you deep in your heart. Because you know that the life you have chosen is a life that honors God. You have chosen to follow Christ with your whole heart and you look forward to His coming. You can't wait to see Jesus coming in the clouds. Because you are not ashamed of the way you are living. When I was a boy, they used to preach about the second coming of Christ all the time. And I've always heard that. If you don't live righteous and the Lord comes, you'll be left behind. <coughs> so I came home from school one day and nobody was there. My mother was always there when I got home from school. My mother was a godly woman. And I wasn't. I began to worry that the Lord had come and I had been left behind. I was ashamed of the way I was living. This peace comes because we live right. Now, the world paints righteousness or righteous living as being hateful. If you don't approve of the godless living that they insist is okay, then you are hateful. Surely there's no peace in that. Holiness is so strict that you just don't like other people. So, how can you have peace if you hate everyone that doesn't believe like you do? This is the way the world looks at holy living and faith that leads to holiness. But when I hear the media and politicians talk about Christians like that, I have to laugh. They don't know what it's like to serve our loving Savior, or they could never talk about us like that. They don't know what it's like to serve our loving Savior, or they could never talk about us like that. 
True peace comes to those who align with God's word. That's why I was sharing the story I did earlier about me when I was a boy and my mother always saying, I love you, so I'm going to spank you. And uh, I'm almost done, so don't, uh, don't everybody uh, leave on me yet. But, uh, understand something. This is very logical. The Bible teaches that God created us. And as our creator, he knows what is best for us. He created us in a specific way, and when we walk in that way, we can fulfill our greatest potential. We may think we know better than God what is good for us, but we don't. The Bible teaches us very clearly that His way is above our way. His thinking is above our thinking. We don't even fully understand our own bodies, but God does. And God has given us guidelines on how to live so that we can live life to its fullest. Any other way will lead us to disaster. Following Him leads us to joy. Following Him leads us to peace. Following Him leads us to true, righteous peace. You'll never know true peace until you learn to accept Christ's love and Christ's holiness as well. You don't need to be ashamed of walking in God's righteous way. You'll be more fulfilled when you walk in obedience in God's word. It's much more fulfilling to obey Him rather than to try and force His word to agree with your way of thinking. There's a story that is told, I'll close with this story. There's a story that's told about an old man who was called the keeper of the spring. It's a story that's told about a beautiful mountain town up in the Swiss Alps. This town had a beautiful, calm spring flowing through it. It was so beautiful, people would come from miles around just to enjoy it. The swans gathered and as did the small forest animals, it was breathtaking. Many years ago, the town council had hired a man who lived upstream in the mountains above. They hired him to clean the stream of fallen branches and trees and to make sure that the spring flowed smoothly down the mountain into their little town. But now, decades later, a different town council was going over the budget and noticed this one expense coming out every month for the keeper of the spring. Does anyone know anything about this? They asked, who is this? What does he do? Is this for real? Nobody knew, so they canceled this man's payment. For a while, nothing changed. The spring flowed as beautifully as before. The tourists were still happy. The swans stayed around. Nothing changed. 
拡張も住んでいました Then came fall. そして秋が来ました the leaves fell from the trees. 落ち葉が上流に落ち the occasional storm blew branches off the trees and into the spring. たびたびの台風が木の枝を泉に振り落とし Here and there a tree would fall across the spring causing the flow of water to stop. 時には木が倒れたりして水の流れを止めてしまいました。やがて泉は枯れました。白鳥は去り、観光客もいなくなりました。村が泉の番人を辞めさせたからです。私たちの人生も同じです。When we to the keeper of the spring and allow him To remove these sinful desires, the spring of eternal life flows freely through us, and those around us will notice the beauty of the Lord's creation. But the sin must go. We must be willing to repent of our sins and allow God to set us on the path of righteousness. He will make you pure as snow as He takes away our sin. He will make you into the image of Christ. This is the promise of Scripture. Follow Him with your whole heart, and He will give you peace. Righteous peace. Let's pray. Father, we are so grateful for your teaching in Scripture. We thank you, Lord, that you show us. Right and wrong. We thank you that you forgive us for the wrong that we commit. And we thank you that you lead us into a righteous path. We thank you that you give us strength to live righteous before you. And while none of us are perfect, we know that you will always forgive us again for our sins. And you give us your peace. 